بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه This session is part of the series التخلية قبل التحلية or the act of purification before beautification purify then beautify and this session is titled Al-Ujb and the translation of Al-Ujb I could not find a direct word that can encompass the term in its full extent but it is about seeing yourself big it's about uh, boasting yourself uh, self-conceit vanity all these relate to the term in one way or another but inshallah when we talk about al I'm, I'm, I am going to use I am going to use the term as is al and hopefully uh, you will figure out exactly what we mean by that so why did we ch- choose al uh, because it is a disease and it is a disease that many other hard diseases will be built on it Imam Ibn Ata رضي الله تعالى عنه says أصل كل معصية وغفلة وشهوة الرضا عن النفس that the origin of every sin the origin of every heedless act the origin of every desire is all originated to this act of seeing yourself and being pleased with it actually الرضا عن النفس is prior to العجب I'm not going to go to that. I'm just going to talk about al ujb itself. So first, you are pleased with yourself. It creates al ujb Then it can go to riya. It can go to takabbur. It can go to kufr, as we will see later on. And this heart disease is not just because it is the origin of many other things that will be built on it. It is not just because of that, but it's also about bringing your attention to yourself rather than to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Muslim, you should believe that everything you are enjoying is a gift from Allah. And you should always take yourself out from taking credit in anything. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Any ni'ma, any blessings that you are enjoying is from God. So out of humility, out of humbleness, you always refer to God as the one who has granted you this blessing in one way or another. al ujb is you turn the focus from seeing God's hands, the one that is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving you all that and then relating it to yourself. And one who does that, he is harming himself because he will bring it into this life and into many matters that will be harmful we'll see how and of course at the day of judgment he might be on the track of going to punishment and hell walayadu billah also another reason why i chose this because people will be busy uh, instead of praising god they'll be praising themselves and people who praise themselves are on a wrong track allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran al-kareem bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim fala tuzakku anfusakum do not praise yourself. Do not uh, give yourself credit of righteousness. Allah is the one who knows which one is of taqwa or which one of not. And it also leads you to be away from the status of humility and humbleness. And that this is a, a manner that every Muslim following the Prophet وسلم, should be making sure that he attains that. And it's part of his character. And also, people of Uj will distract themselves from understanding the honor of other people. They start seeing themselves better than others. And if it's just to put the barrier between you and people, between and, and that will affect your social life. It will affect your relationship with your wife, with your kids, with your colleagues at work. And anyway, you need to understand how important the topic is. And nowadays we are living 
and that's the reason I chose this topic, that everything is about being self-centered. Technology, look at uh, media, look at, uh, you, know, uh, you know, episodes in TV, look at uh, movies. It's all about the self, the I, you know, even iPhone, iPad, you know, Facebook, all these things. It's all glorifying the self, the entity, as if no one can see himself like someone else. Everyone wants to see himself better. Families are being affected by this. Really, when you come to the core idea of coping with each other as husband and wife, sacrificing, the reason behind not willing to sacrifice is that you are self-centered. You see yourself uh, to be served, not to serve. You see yourself that people should sacrifice to you, not that you should sacrifice to others. So if you are full of yourself and you are full of ujb, then everything will be disrupted in your life. So it's very important to understand how bad this disease is because if you can manage it, if you can deal with it, then for sure you can have a peaceful life with yourself and with people around you. Now, when we go to the definition of al-ujb, we see in the linguistic terminology it's az-zahu bin nafs to look at yourself and you praise it up and you and, and you rise and and praising it az-zahu or az-zahu to see yourself that you are something different unique and that's another you know uh, uh, translation you will see it from al-ajab al-ajab to wonder or to be surprised or amazed by th something you know min ujuba something like you know ajib what is the relativity you know ujb and ajab Al-ajab is something when it is defined, it is said, إِنْكَارُ مَا يَرِدُ عَلَيْكَ لِقِلَّةِ اعْتِيَادِهِ That you look at something and you kind of back off on it because you have not seen it much. It's not normal. It's out of the normal. So this ajab is part of understanding the ujb. You start seeing yourself different than it is meant to be. So you are pleased with yourself and you like it in this way. And you are amazed by yourself and you are full of yourself. So it is connected in the origin of the term. And also, al-ujb is that when you look at your actions, your establishments, and you magnify it, you make it big and, 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 uh, and, and large in a way that you are always referring the credit to yourself, not to anyone else. And you are growing, eating yourself from inside. And at the end, you are going to fall. And you are going to fall in this life and the hereafter. And then when you relate to the matters, you stop by relating it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me take you to an incident that uh, Umar ibn Hafs, he was at the time of the Umayyad rule, at the time of Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi Now Al-Hajjaj, was a tough, vicious uh, ruler. And many people died under him. But there has been some wisdom narrated to him in one way or another. He had established some good things. But to be fair, this incident and this story that happened to him is something interesting to look at. He was asked, so now you are in Iraq. How is your home over there? How is your residence? How do you like it living in Iraq? He said, خَيْرُ منزل. It's the best of places to live in. لَوْ كَانَ اللَّهُ بَلَّغَنِي قَتْلَ أَرْبَعَ But if I'm able to kill four people, it will be the best place to live in. And they said, who are they, these four people? And then he said, the first one is مُقَاتِلُ ابْنُ مَسْمَعَ وَلِي سَجِسْتَان His name is Muqatil. He is the governor of Sajistan. He said, أَتَاهُ النَّاسِ People started coming to him when he was the governor. فَأَعْطَاهُمُ الْأَمْوَالِ So he gave them money. فَلَمَّا عُزِلْ When he was taken, you know, out from this post. دَخَلَ مَسْجِدَ الْبَصْرَةِ He entered a masjid in Al-Basrah. فَبَسَطَ لَهُ النَّاسُ أَرْدِيَتَهُمْ People rolled their clothes, like their garment, for him to walk on it, to honor him, to praise him. 
عَلَيْهَا So he started like the red carpet from their garments. That's what it is. فَقَالَ لِرَجُلٍ يُمَاشِيهِ He looked at a person next to him and he said, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ Now this is an ayah. An ayah, it is meant to be said by, by people who are in heaven. That for this, what we are, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا For this matter, let people work. So when they resided in heaven and they seen what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them, they will say, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For such residents in heaven, people should act and engage good deeds so Allah would, you know, honor them with heaven. So what he did, he considered that post that he is in and he is in heaven. He was so full of himself. And this is, he said, like, as if he's saying, this is heaven for me. I don't need the heaven of the akhir. So al Hajjah said, this person deserves to be killed. In his view. And then he said, the second person is Abdullah ibn Ziyad at Tamimi. ahl al Basra. He used to scare the people of Al Basra. He made a, like he gave a talk or a khutbah in the masjid. One of the people and the audience stood up and said, Akthar Allahu fina mithlak. May Allah make so many of you. We have to clone you. You are so unique. And then what did that person say? لَقَدْ كَلَّفْتُمُ اللَّهَ شَطَطًا You have requested a matter that is too tough on God to do. To make two of me. So what type of answer is that? Someone who is what? Full of himself. As if he is saying, even God cannot make another person like me. So al Hajjah said, I, I wish I could reach that person and kill him. And then he said, the third person, his name is Ma'mad ibn Zarara. Then a yawm kana jalisan fi tariq he was just sitting by the road. فَمَرَّتْ بِهِمْ رَأَهْ A woman passed by him, فَقَالَتْ لَهُ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ كَيْفَ الطَّرِيقُ إِلَى مَكَانِ فُلَانِ How can I reach that place? فَقَالَ يَا هَنَاهَا Oh, what a, what a moment. Amithli yakunu min abidillah. Do you see me worthy of to be called Abdullah? I'm something more higher than that. And if prophets were called Abdullah, subhanallah, asra, bi abdihi, you know, etc., etc. Who are you to rise and declare yourself higher than a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the last one, he said he wished he had, you know, killed him. وَأَبُوْ سَمَّالِ الْأَسْدِي أَضَلَّ اللَّهُ رَاحِلَتَهُ He lost his camel. فَالْتَمَسَهَا النَّاسِ فَلَمْ يَجِدُوهَا Like people started looking for it, they didn't find it. So this person said, وَاللَّهِ إِنْ لَمْ يَرُدَّ إِلَيَّ رَاحِلَتِي If God does not bring my camel back to me, لَا صَلَّيْتُ لَهُ صَلَاةً أَبَدًا I'm not going to pray any salah for him. فَالْتَمَسَهَا النَّاسُ فَوَجَدُوهَا People looked for it, then they found it. They said, Here's your camel. God brought it back to you. Go ahead and pray. He said, Inna yamini yaminu musir. Ah, my oath is too precious to be broken. I'm not going to go back and pray. These examples of these people, regardless if they deserve to be killed or not, that was just the story. It just talks about a disease that when people are full of themselves in the status of al-ujb, they cause themselves harm by putting themselves in this place that would be worthy of punishment from Allah and people will disconnect from them. You cannot survive around someone who is full of himself. Really. We're going to quote what Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali says in that. Now, Imam al-Mawardi says, Al-I'jabu, if you are self-full of yourself, you know, boasting yourself, if there is something good in you, because of this status of you are mu'jab bi nafsak, you know, full of yourself, people will not see the good things in you. The only thing that they will focus on is these things that you show yourself different than others and superior to others. So even if there is some good aspects in you, you cause yourself to cancel it in your character and people will not see it. Because people are, you know, more looking toward the bad stuff or the evil stuff. 
this entity of you, when you are full of yourself, then it's going to translate into actions that are going to be of sayyat. وَيَكْسِبُ madam, People will start gossiping about you. And people will start talking in your back. And people will start relating to you in matters that are not proper to anyone to feel that people are mentioning him in that way. وَيَصُدُّ عَنِ الْفَضَائِلِ Like the examples we gave of the four people, it prevents you from engaging good deeds. You see yourself better than that. Who am I to do this? Why should I do that? I am too, you know, high. I am too better than this. Now, al-ujb as a ruling is haram. So what is the ruling? Is it makruh? Is it, it is haram. It's one of the kabar. And when we're talking about the sins of the limbs, they could be kabair, they could be sa'ir, but most of the sins of the heart are kabair in general because they originate all the acts of the limbs outside. Ibn Taymiyyah says, and this is very important to focus on, most of the times, ar is connected with al ujb What is ar Showing off. He said, wherever there is ujb, self you know, boasting or being full of yourself, it will always relate and connect with showing off. And he said, فَالْرِيَاءُ مِنْ بَابِ الْإِشْرَاكِ بِالْخَلْقِ You know, in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that Allah will not accept a deed that someone intended someone else with him. It has to be pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's riya. He called it ash-shirk al-azghar, the minor shirk. So he said, Ariya is when you bring people and you act with intention for them to see you. So you are acting on a minor shirk, including people in your intention. And then he said, وَالْعُجْبُ مِنْ بَابِ الْإِشْرَاكِ بِالنَّفْسِ So the same way you are acting on a minor shirk in Riya, wanting to be seen by people, Al-Ujb, is you are acting on a minor shirk, you want to be seen by yourself. As if you want to testify on yourself how great you are. You want to be full of yourself in a way that you don't, actually it's, it could be worse than Riyah. Because people of Riyah showing off, they want to incorporate other people's praise. But this person doesn't even care about people. He just full of himself. It could be worse. And then he continues, Rahimahullah, by saying, فَالْمُرَائِي لَا يُحَقِّقُ قَوْلَهُ تَعَالَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ The person of showing off fails to act on the verse in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُد Because عِبَادَ is to Allah, so you bring someone else and you insert him in between. And then he said, وَالْعُجْبُ لَا يُحَقِّقُ قَوْلَهُ تَعَالَ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ it, it interferes and it runs the idea of that you rely on God. You rely on whom? On yourself. You see yourself, the factor in making things happen. So the type of minor shirk in Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een is riya and what? An ujb. Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, says, I'lam anna al-ujb It is something hated. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, spoke about matters where he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thalathun muhlikat. Three things will devastate you. Shuhud muta'a. A status of stinginess that you are cheap and it is controlling you. Wahawan muttaba'a. And wimps of your, you know, mind taking you left and right. And you are following it. it. It takes you. Not not a conscious of righteousness. And someone who is full of himself. He sees himself. Wow, like how great I am. How good I am. So when the Prophet is directing you, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, to pay attention to these three things, you know, Shuhun Muta' Wahawan Muttaba' Wa Ijabul Mar ibn Nafsihi, we also Know that part of al ujb if it enters into your heart and you are a practicing person, you are a practicing Muslim, it guarantees you, you will fail to cash the deed 
يعني بتوين ذا هاندز اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى صحابه هو از بيتر ذان صحابه نو وان اند وات ديد الله سبحانه وتعالى سي اباوت ذم ويوم حنين اذ اعجبتكم كثرتكم ريمبر ذا باتل اوف حنين when you were, I mean, and Badr, they were the small numbers, and the mushrikeen were the bigger, and then there was a status of Ya Rab. But in Hunayn, they looked at their numbers, they said, okay, no one is going to beat us today, we are big. The moment they looked at themselves, and they did not look at Allah is the one who is going to bring them victory, فَلَمْ تُغْنِ عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيَّةً Did not cash for you any type of victorious. Not until they re- Yani, uh, figured their intentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought, you know, <coughs> uh, triumph and victor- victory back to them. And look at the, also, when Allah spoke about the people of the book in, in uh, Khaybar, مِّنَ اللَّهِ They thought that their, you know, barricades <laughs> or their towers that they have built, it will prevent the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to them. The moment you start thinking that your establishment, yourself, your contribution, your mind, your smartness, this is the one that is making difference for you in life, you have lost track and you are not on the proper channel in life. As a matter of fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the, the worst losers at the day of judgment, whom are they? أَفَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Should I tell you of the worst losers in relation to the deeds that they have presented? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا That their act is going astray and they are full of themselves. They're just focusing on what they are establishing. But yet it's going away from that which will cash rewards for them at the day of judgment. The Prophet also sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, بَيْنَمَا رَجُلٌ يَمْشِي There was a man just walking. فِي حُلَّةٍ He what? He bought a new suit, he bought a new garment, he bought this. You know, so he started feeling, look how nice I am, how good I am, in a way that he started seeing himself arrogant and full of himself. إِذْ خَسَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ Allah took him in some sort of a hole, you know. فَهُوَ يَتَجَلْجَلُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ He is like uh, falling and falling and falling in the status of the Alm al ghayb in his grave or whatever it is at the day of judgment. This is all because of what? A status of mind and heart. The moment you start seeing yourself, remember what Ibn Ata said, أَصْلُ كُلُّ مَعْصِيَةٍ وَغَفْلَةٍ وَشَهْوَةٍ الرِّضَ عَنِ النَّفْسِ It all originates from there. Ibn Mas'ud said, رضي الله تعالى عنه, الهلاك في اثنتين, two things can bring devastation to you. القنوط, the status of despair, والعجب, to be elated of yourself and full of yourself. And Abu Hamid al-Ghazali related that, you know, quote to Ibn Mas'ud and said, وإنما جمع بينهما, the way he brought between القنوط and العجب, لِأَنَّ السَّعَادَةَ لَا تُنَالُ إِلَّا بِالسَّعِي وَالطَّلَبُ وَالْجَدُ وَالْجِدِّ وَالتَّشْمِيرِ That happiness and joyfulness in life cannot be attained but by putting act. So if you are qanit, yaes, giving up on things, you'll never reach any place. And then the second one, he said, وَالْمُعْجَبُ يَعْتَقِدُ أَنَّهُ قَدْ ظَفَرَ بِمَا لَدَيْهِ The one who is full of himself, he thinks that he got what he wants. He's in no need of anything else. And what a loss if you think that you reached and you have not reached anything. Because you are a human being full of shortcomings and there is nothing complete in this life. So how can you think of yourself you are complete? Now, Bishr ibn Mansur was one of the al-ubbad, one of the people who used to pray and, you know, always remember Allah, make dhikr. And you know, there are people, if you see them, from the moment you see them, you say, La ilaha illallah, masha'allah, you see nur. And there are people, you see, La hawla wa la quwata illa billahi, you know, like, my goodness. So, Bishr ibn Mansur was among the people, when you see them, you say, La ilaha illallah, masha'allah, tabarakallah. 
يذكرك الله واليوم الآخر like you know the ayah could be a verse the ayah could be a bird could be a scenery and it could be a human being that if you see someone it reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he was known that whoever sees him he will remember Allah and the hereafter he was praying and someone joined him in salah and then you know he, he takes long so he took long and he paid attention to the person next to him so when they were done with the salah he looked at him and he said listen لا يعجبنك ما رأيت مني. do not be deceived by that which, by that which I did dear Balak فإن إبليس لعنه الله for Iblis عبد الله مع الملائكة مدة طويلة he used to hang out with the angels and he used to worship God for so long but look how he, he ended up قال أنا خير منه I am better than him العجب broke him down and it led him to a تكبر and this is what you need to always train yourself that you need to be humble you need to be on humility and don't praise yourself and don't be selfful in a way because that's what will make you start looking at people down that what will make you degrade people and we're talking about family members we're talking about friends we're talking about you know relationship the moment you are relating matters to allah allah will bring people around you and they will love you for that humility status that you are in and that's it if Allah declares that he loves you that's it you're done Allah will tell the angels to love you and Jibreel will call in heavens this person is loved by God so love him all the angels will love him and then the Prophet ﷺ said Thumma then Allah will put some sort of people being pleased with him and that's it you are guaranteed this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was asked once, Mata yakunu rajulu musi'an? When would a person be of isa'a, of sayyat, of you know, bad things, evil things? Qalat, idha dhanna annahu muhsin. If he assumed that he is among the muhsineen. Whatever you do, you have no idea that it is not worthy anything when you compare it to the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't claim that you have done things. Just show your obedience and surrender and submission to Allah and ask Allah forgiveness through his mercy, not through that which you have established. Now, the matter of al-ujb is in different ways. Some people are mu'jaboon in their bodies. That's what Abu Hamad, he started listing where are the areas that people are falling in the disease of al-ujb. So he started by saying, al-ujbu bil-badan. You go to the gym and you see these people, mashallah, muscles, they raise, you know, 150 pounds or 200 pounds. Oh, you look as Allah said about the munafiqeen وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ If you look at them, you will be, wow, what a great body. This hand, these hands and muscles that are pulling this much, they failed to put the blanket up and raise it to wake up for Salat al-Fajr. So where you're going to catch that muscles? If you are blessed with something, then you have to use it for the khair. And when you are blessed with something, you're not going to be looking at yourself and start praising yourself. The same body and one small bacteria, one virus, one insect, it could bite you. It could be a mosquito. And this 280 pounds or 250 pounds, that is mashallah, mashallah, will be like uh, in a bed of, of a hospital and 10 doctors are trying to figure out what's wrong with them and they could not figure it out. So don't be deceived with your body. 
a male or a female, don't be just focusing on yourself, on the way you look, of how people will judge you. The only one you should care about is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you. And Allah is fair. Allah is adil. People will never be fair with you. As much as you try to impress people, people will never be fair. And if that's what's your target in life, then you are going to live in a status of worry constantly. What did this person say about me? What did this lady say about me? What did this man say about me? But when you know that you are trying to please Allah, Allah will appreciate your effort. Allah is fair and Allah is just. And He will honor you in a way that will cash back to you in a way that it will make you what? feel good. Remember this body like Umar ibn Abdul Aziz radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One person came to him after he was, you know, a Khalifa and he was praising him. MashaAllah, look at yourself. Now you are a Khalifa. He said, come and visit me after I die. If you have a chance to take a look at my body in the grave one week or two weeks after I die and see your body, how see my body, how it is. So all these matters that you are, you know, full of yourself with, it doesn't mean that you should not take care of yourself. But don't be full of yourself because of that. Look at yourself. Even the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you look at the mirror, Allahumma hassin khuluqi kama hassanta khalqi. The way that you made my look is fine and proper, make my manners fine and proper. And the same thing in, in your body and etc. The second thing he said, al bil wal To be deceived by your power. If it was the power of money, if it was the power of connections, if it was the power of uh, you are a leader or you are a president or king or whatever it is, that you have the ability to harm others. You are entrusted in these gifts that Allah had given you. Power and quwa is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should utilize it in the way that it should reflect justice and equality and freedom among people. Not that you enslave people to you. And you go to people with money. Why Islam prohibited riba? Because it is an enslaved status that the needy person who wants money to pay you know to to, to send his son to a uh, uh, college or to even you know take a loan for medical needs or building that person who has money he came and he abused his moment of vulnerability and he gave him the hundred thousand dollars and he said okay paid back three hundred thousand dollars he gave him the ten thousand dollars and he said paid, paid back twenty thousand dollars instead of a good loan that a person should help a fellow human being just because he is in need and you want to do a good deed. That's what Islam tried to promote him. So abuse, using power could be in money, could be in, in uh, attacking people and invading other people's you know, lives and killing them like what's happening around the world. So don't be deceived by any act of power that Allah had brought to you. The power of words. Sometimes you know that you can hurt someone with your words. You can bully someone if he is overweight or if she is, you know, uh, lacking some knowledge here or something. It's especially I deal with a lot of social problems. There are people whom you don't have to physically harm them. You can like kill them with your words because of how evil words can hit the spirit. When you tell your wife, yeah, fashla, yeah, you know, the failure that you never fail to do any, never, you know, rise to do anything. You are just killing that person's spirit. Or when a woman wants to abuse the husband and his power. If you are a man, divorce me. Oh, I am a man, you are divorced. Why do we want to go to these abusive acts? And we are going to be the victims at the end of that. In one way or another, we're going to be feeling that type of uh, heat coming back to us. Al-Ujbu bin Nasab, to whom family you belong. 
and I know this is an Arab and, and Pakistani and you know what family you are from or whatever it is. The first thing, Ibn Mean. Baba, I have someone who's going to ask for my hand. Mean Abu, Bint Mean, Mean Abuha. The first thing people ask about which family it is. And Nasab is something honorable, yes. When the line of people, what does the Nasab mean? The heritage, you know, the uh, family. When this family, the father, the mother, you know, the grandparents, the grandparents, do good deeds. They do good acts. They are generous. They are uh, humble. Uh, they uh, help people. So they start creating a reputation of good values. So you honor this line. So the line is not honored because of the race. It's not honored because of the color of the skin. It's not honored because of a geographical area. It is honored by the values that these family have been busy with. And it relates all to the righteousness. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ so where I'm going to cash this man, if he's going to ask for the hand of my daughter, and he is the son of this very famous family, but he doesn't know Allah, you know, and he cannot deliver manners and values in the life. And the second day, my daughter is going to have problems with him. And probably someone who is not known, the Prophet once, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told someone next to him, a person passed by him. He said, مَا رَأَيُكَ فِي هَذَا what do you think of this person? Hasa. He said, this is one of the rich people of Quraysh. Hatha hariyun in khataba an yunkah. This person deserves, if he asks the daughter of someone, he should be given. Wa in shafa'a an yushafa'a. And if he came and told you, please do this favor for me, you should respond to him. And then another person passed. And then the Prophet told the same person, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do you think of that person? He said, hatha min fuqara al-muslimin. This guy is poor. Hariyun in khataba Allah yunka. If 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 he's gonna knock someone's door to ask for the hand of someone, no one should give him the hand of his daughter. Wa in shafa Allah yushafa. And who's gonna give him any value to honor an intercession between two people? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Hada, the last one, Khayrum min mil al ardi min mithli hada. And the eyes of God it's different. This person that you just mentioned, the last, who is poor, and the eyes of Allah is better than bring as many people to fill earth of that type of person. This one person can weigh them all in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because he has no ujb with, with the money or the, with the wealth he has. Also, there are people who are full of themselves, bil ujb, that they have connections, especially with tyrants, with alimeen, with tawaid. Go to Bladna al Arabi and see how it works. Like the first thing, you know, you want to you get any paper, you know, whom do you know? You want to get any job, whom do you know? Like how much you're going to pay money to, to uh, bribe someone. It's all about, and those people, they start abusing people. You know, how much you're going to give him, how much he's going to take for his own pocket. So he starts seeing himself as someone who is different, superior, better than others, because he has a status with someone. While the status has only value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The status that these people who are tyrants or zalimeen or people of aggression, if you are, aram, if you are among them and if you are hanging out, you are, you are one of them. Like Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, radiallahu ta'ala, and one time he was in the prison and the guard, you know, uh, you know, was feeling kind of sorry for Imam Ahmed Hanbal. He said, you know, you know, I have nothing to do with them. You know, make a dua for me that Allah forgives me or something like that. He said, you are of them. Yani they could not have put me in the prison without you. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke how Fir'aun reached to be Fir'aun, he said, That no one told Fir'aun, don't. They either feared him and they didn't do anything. Or they either they were part of him. You have to stand against aggression. And you have to be able to say that which is on your mind. The moment you, you, know, you, 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 you don't speak. The moment you don't participate or change. Like the uh, incident of the town that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set an angel to go destroy it. He said, Ya Rab, there's one person who's righteous in it. He said, start with him. 
كان يرى المنكر ولا ينهى عنه he used to see munkar happening and he would say nothing so at least بقلبك you know you have to in any level that you should تنكر المنكر also with the time running short on us العجب بكثرة العدد if you have a lot of people you know as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وقالوا نحن أكثر أموالا وأولادا you know the more people the more followers now even on Facebook you know, how many followers do you have like I'm gonna be valued by how many likes who cares Wallahi, this person, and if you are going to work and put posts and just to see how many likes, not to try to perfect what you are doing for the sake of Allah, then you already got what you pay, what, what you wanted. If your intention, the likes, if your intention, the number of followers, then the whole deed might be wasted. And Allah will tell you at the day of judgment, you took your share already, people gave you what you wanted. Allah will not take any deed but that which is pure for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people who are full of themselves, العجب, he's just, you know, relate that to themselves of how many people will follow them. العجب, you know, بالرأي, in your own views. There are people who see themselves like they cannot take nasiha from anyone. And this is the worst level that a person can reach. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta said, أَفَمَنْ زُيِّنَ لَهُ Imagine the person whom his bad deed has been beautified, so he see it as good. Yani we used to say, Khamra is haram, and it is evil, and it is bad. Imagine someone telling you the benefits of Khamra, and he's a Muslim. It's not just he lost the track that it is haram, he's in worse status. He believed that it is good. This is an advanced level in being deceived. Now, reasons for ujb are too many. I'm going to be fast just to keep up with the time. The first thing that causes people to be full of themselves is al-jahl. Being ignorant. So if you want to treat al-ujb in yourself, fight ignorance in yourself. Learn. Learn, and the first thing you need to learn is the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you know God, بأسمائه وصفاته وكماله وجماله وجلاله, the more you should see yourself how يعني, nothing you are. And then you should relate all matters to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing you fight jahl with is studying the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the best man ever sent to humanity. And he died a simple man. He died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, we, we spoke the incident of Abu Dharr al-Ghafari last week, seeing the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sleeping on the mats, and it made marks on his arm, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Ya Rasul Allah, you know, the kings of Persia and Rome sleep on silk, and you are sleeping on a mat. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, isn't it enough that it is for them in this dunya and for us at the day of judgment? That was sufficient for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This dunya was not in his heart. So when we study his seerah, when we learn his seerah, then we are canceling jahl from us and getting to know the truth so it will help us be more humble or more uh, pure from al-ujb. Try... Anytime see people try to praise you, Yarhamkumullah, to tell them fear Allah and me. And you don't like to be praised a lot. You know, the Prophet ﷺ told a person that he was praising another person, you have caused him big harm. The praise and the way of an objective to give people, you know, self-confidence is good. But if you phrase it in a way, you are the one whom everyone depends on. You are the one that if you don't do this, nothing will happen. You are the one that, mashallah, this, you are just killing that person. He starts feeling that he is really in this, in this post or position. So try to avoid, even in tajweed, in the Quran, kalimat ana, we don't make it long. Don't you understand that? Whenever you read, you know, inna ni ana Allah, we, we go fast. 
so we don't make it long to ourselves. They never used Ya Al Mulkiya. You know, Hada Telephone. He would never say Hada Telephony. Hadihi Waraka. He would never say Hadi Warakati. Not to claim anything for himself. Everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would never bring any title to himself. One person told him, Ya Sheikh, so he started looking around him. Who is the Sheikh? Not that he's not a Sheikh. But he is too humble to see himself deserve of to be being called. Nowadays, he goes to the Hajj. He comes back. If you didn't tell him, Ya Hajj, if one hatayat ash talaf al fadi, after I paid ten thousand dollars, you're not gonna come and tell me Ya Hajj. Sakilat ka ummuk, you know, like how dare you? So it is a matter of. Looking at yourself and seeing you have nothing. It's all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, part of the reason for al-ujb, if you cancel al-akhira and your calculations and your account. If all what you think about it, dunya, 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 then of course, you're going to try to make all your establishments in this life. But if you see the akhira as true and as genuine as you see this life, then you're not going to care about you know, I don't know if I told you this story or not. One person was talking to an imam and saying, look at the status of Muslims, look at what's happening, we are in desperate moments. He said, listen, if you have number one and you put a zero next to it, what number would that be? He said, ten. He said, six zeros. He said, million. He said, nine zeros. He said, billion. He said, line up zeros between here and the sun. How many zeros? What's the number? He said, we can't even figure it out. He said, compare that big number to infinity. What is the ratio? 0 0.00, I don't know. A 0, a 0 0.00, you know, ratio. And that is life to Akhirah. If you only think about here, the Fania, uh, even the name Dunya, down, you know, Akhirah. If you do not incorporate Akhirah in your calculations, then of course you're going to be depressed. And you're going to be trying to grab everything now and be full of yourself because, okay. But if you truly believe in the Akhirah, you're going to try to be humble because that's what will be your card to enter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and heaven at the day of judgment, inshallah. Always listen to an nasiha even if it's hard, even if it's harsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتُ وَتَوَاصَوْا بالحق. They remind each other about the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. And we, no one likes to be criticized. And I don't like to be criticized. I can't, you know, before I tell my wife anything, I have to think of a zillion ways to say it. Just so I could be, you know, working properly. Because you know that people don't like to be criticized. Imam al-Banna, rahimahullah, used to say, be like a palm tree. People will throw you with rocks so you can give them dates. Rise over people in khair, in righteousness, not in arrogance. Rise in that, don't bother about, you know, if they are giving you something good, a nasiha, and a good advice, Take it with an open heart and don't hold grudges. And even if they had bad intentions, don't bother. Life is short to take this matter into some sort of sensitivity. And let me finish with this. The one who is full of himself. Shortly he's going to end up with three things. Al-Kibr, you're going to grow arrogant. Qillatul insaf with min nafsihi, you're not going to be fair with yourself. Wat tasarrufu bir riyasa, when you have power, you're going to misuse it. Wa suhbatuhu, hanging with people who are full of themselves. Turithu thalathan, aw tuwarithu thalathan. It will cause you three things. Al-ubudiyya lahu. If you hang out with people like that, they will enslave you to them. They cannot be accepting you to be next to them. You can only be under them. 
because they are full of themselves. They want to be that place. What takalluf? They're going to exaggerate everything they do. They're going to add spices to everything they do to like, make it look better. At the end, you're not going to be able to hold on in friendship with these people. It's going to be disconnected at one way or another. Because he gives himself the right for everything that he might not have right for. You would never be able to please him. He would never forgive someone's shortcomings. He will never give you a hand. He's full of himself. He's busy with himself. He doesn't have time to help you. He doesn't have time to think of what good he can bring to you. You cannot hang out with them. These are not the types of people that you want to hang out with. If he has some knowledge, Watch out because his knowledge will cause him to be very much, you know, uh, effective. وَإِنْ كَانَ جَاهِلًا If he is of ignorance فَجَهْلُهُ بَلَاءٌ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَى صَاحِبِهِ It will turn out, you know, uh, uh, bad for him and himself. Let me finish with this line only. The only way you clear yourself next to all this, what we have mentioned about Al-Ujb, is to see Allah and nothing else. He is the one that is the source of everything, that is the factor in everything, that is to be praised in everything. If you can maintain that, then you can treat the ujb in yourself. Any questions? Yes, sir. Sheikh, um, let's say you're moving up in spirituality and some of your other friends are not, and so you tend not to hang out with them anymore because you know they bring your iman down. How do you separate yourself where you don't look arrogant saying, you know, Yanni, I just want to do other things now? But still, you know, not look arrogant that you don't want to hang out with them because they're not the same spirituality as you. They say al umma to do kamilu ba'du ha that the umma, um, um, like, completes each other. So you are going to weigh this relationship. If you are going to feel that you're going to gain more evil than the khair, then you quit. But if you think that you can give them the khair that you have, then you hang up with them. And then it becomes a must. You cannot turn your back on them. You owe people, I mean, who is next to the Prophet in his level? If he saw himself in that level, then he should have stayed by himself. Everyone was under him. But yet he hanged up with the good and the bad ones, hoping that he could give some of what Allah had blessed him to people around him. So you are going to have your homework to yourself between you and Allah. But when you go, I don't advise anyone to disconnect with any people. It doesn't matter how bad they are. Family or whatever it is. No one is pure of evil. No one. There's always some khair in some people, someone. Even Iblis, Allah made him a test for us. So there was khair. You know, we un- we're going to enter heaven if we don't listen to him. So it's at least a good thing we don't listen to him. So don't judge people that they are less or higher. Just think of what good can you give to people and that will help you, inshallah ta'ala. Any other question? Next week we will not meet because there is the fasting of Arafah. The masjid will be holding a uh, iftar jama'i. It's going to be out of the uh, uh, weather is good. It's going to be like iftar uh, uh, suhoor Ramadan outside. If not, it will be in the back or inside. So, uh, inshallah, we'll be, we'll be just, you know, eating. And someone donated, jazallah khair, the whole iftar for that night. Zakumullah khair. We'll see you the week after that. Kul amtum bi khair for Eid al-Adha. Taqabala ta'atkum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.